Legolas comes in with an upgrade question that is not gaming related because not everybody does gaming, gaming. with their computer. Well, they do, but lots of people do non-gaming things. First, he starts off with several questions. His first one is... His first one is, which is not there because it's down one. Well, I was going to have you read this one because it's. he says, hello, hope you and your family is doing well, and he offers us some Tim Tams, and we appreciate when people offer us Tim Tams. We do. Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. We do. So I'll scroll down to this one. So he says, as a... Uh, oh, hang on. I need to scroll up. As a software engineer, my work involves running virtual machines, containers, IDEs, Visual Studio VS Code, compiling, building multiple code solutions, gazillion Chrome tabs, chat, and clients. Hang on. Before we get to the rest of the question, I just want to address this point. I have run virtual machines. I am not a programmer. No. I do not run integrated development environments. I don't compile code. So my explanation and answers, please take this with a grain of salt, not coming from that background. But you do run a gazillion. I do run a gazillion Chrome tabs. Chrome tabs and so. I multitask and I run triple monitors and I do a lot of stuff with my computer. So I can give you a ballpark idea, but it... It's missing a little bit. Yes, I just want to... I, I want to share where my area of expertise is but not step outside of, there's nothing that frustrates me more. When I see people talk about stuff online, they know nothing about because they haven't done it. Mm -hmm. They've read about other people doing it. They've guessed at what it's going to be, mm -hmm. but they do not know. Correct. And so I don't want to be that person and say, oh, well, yes, of course, this will be great because I heard, I read it I read on it. Reddit. I read it on Reddit. So with that disclaimer out of the way. So Legolas says, Upgrade from a 3950X, 64 gigs of RAM to a 7950X, 128 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Will it make a di big difference in user experience? If yes, then which motherboard for a 7950X? Um, upgrade from a Samsung 970 Evo Plus to a Samsung 990 Pro. So this is upgrade questions. The Ryzen 9 3950X is a 2019 CPU Zen 2 16 core 32 thread chip. Now, I know Legolas knows that, yes. but other people watching, it's so easy to assume as a tech reviewer and somebody who's done the research that everybody knows the specs and parts of every part. And so I wanna read these out because if you're watching this and you don't have that memorized, you get lost. That is actually not a 16 core chip, however. It is four four-core chips glued together with a very complicated Infinity Fabric configuration. It works, it's fine, but for example, that particular chip has uh, 64... This is what happens when you get old. 64 megabytes of L3 cache, but it's actually four 16 megabytes of cache yeah, see, 64 megabytes. I have to think about it for a second. 64 megabytes of L3 cache. But what it actually is, is it is four banks of 16 megabytes of cache on each yeah, chiplet, so each there's, CCD. There's lag. In order for these four cores to access the other three 16 megabytes of cache, there is a latency penalty going to them. Mm -hmm. Now for your typical user at the Windows desktop who's just playing a game. It's not the end of the world, but the minute you're running multiple things and you have a lot of stuff going on, unless you core lock your programs to where this virtual machine is only on this 4CCD chip and never strays, what'll end up happening is programs will start spreading those boundaries and everything will just slow way down. Mm -hmm. Memory bandwidth is lower, Chip, uh, uh, CCD to CCD latency is higher. And just the whole thing is a bit of an on-chip mess. Now, you didn't ask the question. However, a Ryzen 9 5950X, which is the Zen 3 chip, which came out just over a year later in 2020, 
is two eight core chips with a pair of 32 megabyte L3 caches and a way simplified structure. And for his use case, he should have done that a while ago, to be honest. Well, he uses it for work. So yeah, you, the, as soon like, as the 5950X came out, you should have immediately dropped it in your board. He's making money with his PC. But that ship has sailed. So. The Ryzen 9 7950X is the same thing. It has two eight core chips with a single infinity fabric between them. So that's fine. And it's Zen 4 on a new platform with DDR5 and just improved everything. Performance-wise, it depends upon what you're doing But versus Zen 3. Now, Zen 2 to Zen 3 was about a 20% improvement. Mm -hmm. Zen 3 to Zen 4 is anywhere between 20 to 40% improvement, very dependent upon your application and whether you are... Main system memory limited because the move to DDR5 did dramatically increase memory bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Whether storage matters. So it's somewhere in that range. Call it 30%. Yep. So moving from Zen 2 to Zen 4 could very well be a 50% raw performance improvement. But that's not where he's going to see the benefit. Where he's going to see the benefit is improved latencies. Yep. Uh, faster transfer rates with newer drives. If he's got a Samsung 970 Semi Evo, Evo Plus... Plus. The 990 Pro. It isn't the sequential transfers, though. It's random. The IOPS and the random performance on a 990 Pro, they're not quite double a 970 Evo, but they are enough that if multiple programs and applications are accessing it at the same time, which the system looks, will feel faster. Which looks like that's the case. Yes. This is a case where the super premium drive and the premium board, premium DDR5 RAM... That's actually going to make as much difference as the faster chip. Mm -hmm. So, would I make that upgrade? Absolutely. How much difference does it make to code compile time? Don't know. Not my area of expertise. But I do know that running multiple virtual machines, you seriously need to leave that old <laughs> platform. And that's why I explained the complexities of the chip design and why, the, again, if he was on a 5950X, it'd be less clear. But on a 3950X, this is an absolute no-brainer. Do it. That is a do it. Now, you asked about what motherboard. And I'm going to show this board. I own this board. I use this board in my Ryzen 9 5950X. And it's discounted. It was $500. I paid $500 at launch for my board. This is $404. This is a really, really nice Asus Pro Art X670E Creator motherboard. This has... Uh, 18 total power stages, but most importantly, it already has USB 4 on it, so it's got you covered for the future. Mm -hmm. It has 10 gigabit networking Ooh. built right in. That'll have it. It has two full X16 slots on it, mm -hmm. four M.2 slots on it, and I was able to put 64 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30, which is a good cast right and see for that for responsiveness mm -hmm. in four dims on day one yes and i've seen a lot of people complain and say yeah but with am5 can you really use high speed ram with four because there were some problems with it yes there were problems with it if you use cheap modules and cheap boards i did neither i used a 500r board and i used g skill trident z um five rgb ram that is AMD Expo certified. Please, please, oh. please use Expo Trident Z. It is easy to miss this detail. Trident Z comes in two different flavors. It comes in Intel XMP3 mm -hmm. for 13900K, and it comes in AMD Expo. They are physically different product numbers. They're different models. They're sold separately. Make sure you buy the AMD RAM. It'll have an AMD Expo sticker on it. Yep. And given your use case, 128 gigs of RAM is not out of the question. It's not cheap, but by the time you buy that CPU and a 400R motherboard and everything else, you know what? Just go straight to 128. Don't waste your time. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit 
all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code Tech Deals using our link in the video description. We have used eWin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with eWin to bring you this special discount and recommend eWin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs. As far as storage goes, I'd buy two of those drives and split my programs and stuff between them because no matter how fast you drive, there is nothing that is faster than having two different workloads on two separate drives. Correct, yeah. So Rather than on one. So definitely get two 990 Pros and split as much as you can between them. It just makes everything run much, much better. That'll be a really nice machine that you build, but I've, I've built that. I've had that now for eight months, and it has just been... No, knock on wood, no blue screens to death, no problems. It's been stable. It's been stable. It's been fast. Uh, would buy it again if I needed another one. And uh, it's not a gaming board, but he doesn't need no, a gaming he board. Need a gaming he needs board. a. And the I really love the fact that it's got 10 gig Wi-Fi 6E, 4M.2 slots, and most importantly, in the long run, I think he'll be really glad it has USB 4. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll need that at some point. I think he will. And he'll be ready to drop a Zen 5 in next year yep. and a Zen 6 in two years after that. Correct. Because it sounds like he's going to need to do that. Please report back once you do that and let us know how it goes. I'm eager to hear your, your results.